Just under 800 years ago, in the dark and gloomy winters of Iceland, someone thought it would be a great idea to write down a story that had already been told for centuries. Imagine trying to do that with all of your grandparents' stories. This tale, bursting with myths, monsters, and legendary heroes, was preserved because the Icelanders were apparently bored enough to start a literary tradition. This story, known across the Viking world from Greenland to the Mediterranean, is the saga of Ragnar Lothbrok. But is there any truth to this epic tale? Let's dive into history and find out while having a laugh along the way. In the year 814, the great king Charlemagne, ruler of the largest empire in Western Europe since the fall of Rome, decided to die and leave his empire to his descendants, who promptly turned it into a mess. His death led to a family feud that would make modern reality TV look tame, breaking his empire into three distinct kingdoms, East Francia, future Germany, Lotharingia, which nobody remembers, and West Francia, future France. This division made the empire about as effective as a screen door on a submarine, setting the stage for external threats. The Franks had previously pushed into pagan northern territories, trying to spread Christianity, and let's be honest, their ego. But now, weakened by their own soap opera-worthy drama, they faced the mighty Vikings. Initially, small groups of Viking raiders dipped their toes into Frankish lands. However, as years passed, these raids grew, making the Franks feel like they were on the worst vacation ever. Enter Regan Harris, a.k.a. Ragnar Lothbrok, the original party crasher. Ragnar was one of the earliest sea kings of the Viking Age, a title that basically meant he was really good at showing up uninvited and making a mess. His most famous raid occurred in 845 when he led a fleet of 120 ships filled with about 5,000 warriors into the heart of Francia. They sacked Rouen and continued plundering towards Paris, probably leaving a Yelp review that said, Great Loot 1010 would raid again. Despite formidable defenses, Ragnar's tactical prowess and ability to terrify the locals led to significant victories. He even managed to trick King Charles the Bald into paying him 6,000 pounds of gold and silver to leave Paris alone. Ragnar probably chuckled all the way back to Denmark, thinking, that was easier than I thought. After returning to Denmark, Ragnar's fate becomes as clear as mud. Some accounts claim he continued his raiding career, possibly into the Irish Sea or Northumbria, where the famous story of his capture and execution by King Aiella of Northumbria unfolds. According to legend, Aiella threw Ragnar into a pit of snakes, and as he died, he supposedly said, I should have brought my snake-proof pants. Ragnar's sons, including Ivar the Boneless, no relation to a chicken wing, Bjorn Ironside and Sigurd Snake in the Eye, because why not, became legendary figures themselves. They led significant Viking invasions and established control over large territories. The most notable of these invasions was the Great Heathen Army, which sounds like a bad heavy metal band, but was actually a terrifying force that wreaked havoc across England in the late 9th century. While the sagas embellish many aspects of Ragnar's life, blending historical events with myth, they cement his place as a legendary Viking hero. Whether Ragnar Lothbrok was a real person or just a Viking superhero invented to impress their friends, his story captures the imagination and highlights the dramatic and often hilarious era of the Viking Age. All 